Uh, welcome back. I'm, uh, I'm just upgrading my Spectrum. Now I've got it working properly. I'm going to use some 22mm pipe. Oh, I've got it wrong way around. Look, not very good, is it? I'll edit that out. And I'm going to cut it down the side uh, about that length, a little bit further. Bend it out flat. Use some thermal um, silicon, glue it to these two chips because that one gets really really hot and that one gets a little bit hot this one's okay um, yeah. so that's the CPU, the ROM and the ULA the ULA gets hot and uh, it does get, you can't even touch it it gets that warm don't know how I've survived in the old days yes yeah, so I've measured around the pipe if you go cut it, it should be about 7 centimetres which gives us enough to cover the whole area. Then we'll drill some holes to aid the cooling with an equation. So I've cut 13.5mm um, um, in centimetres off the pipe. And now I'm going to get the snippers and cut down the length of it down there and flatten it out. Sorry about not having a tripod, I just couldn't be bothered to bring it outside to be honest and it's this copper just cuts like paper look. You have got to uh, prise the sides open to get the cutters in for the last bit otherwise there's no room for the cutters. Right, cut all the way through, now it's just a matter of opening it out. I'm sure this is 0.6, ow! and getting rid of the burrs, 0.6mm um, thick which is just enough room with a spectrum cover nicely opened up I'm going to clean the edges up and try and flatten it out nice and flat, put it in the vise and scrunch it up both directions just got to take the sides off and uh, clean the surface up now Well, I've got all the bits through the post to upgrade my Spectrum, a uh, new 100 microfarad capacitors, actual ones to uh, make it look tidier, and a uh, new power uh, 5 volt regulator, Draco, a 22 microfarad capacitor to replace the one I've melted, and a new um, 7 9, amp, 9 volt socket. Because I've melted the one and it looks black anyway on the inside, so plus a new keyboard membrane and a homemade copper plate heatsink for the ULA. Not finished it yet, obviously. Here's the uh, here's one I've already made. I already made one, and uh, I suppose it works, but I want to make a better one. So first of all, I'm going to change the Trico 5 volt regulator and it goes in that way around with the right into the front. So we'll just take the heat shield off and unsolder this the regulator out and uh, desolder the uh, holes with a solder sucker from the other side and then uh, give them a wipe with a cotton bud with some IPA which I'm going to do now so new 5 volt regulator feed now we'll change this bit of slightly damaged 22 microfarad capacitor new capacitor fitted now for the melted Mankey power supply and now I do the power supply as I put it over the edge of a table and then just do these three connections, look, and do one connection at a time. And just move it out slightly. That didn't move a lot that time. That's moved a bit more. I ain't done the back yet. Yeah, the back's moved. And the little set. Let's start again. Well, that one's not moving a lot, but it should. There you go. There we go, all out. 
Oh, bugger. Quite big um, things to solder, so you've got to be careful not to put too much solder on, or I shouldn't really be doing this with a camera in the way. some solar around this side as well, come on. We'll let it cool down a minute. Okay. Do this back one again from the back. Are we happy? I think we're happy. A bit more. Just a bit more solder on just to fill it up, make it a bit stronger. That'll do. Now repair this, or make it look tidier, this modification I made. This uh, video mod, sorry if you're not familiar with it, makes it, turns it from a normal picture to a normal old TV to a mono, what do you call it, video composite mod. So to take this cover off first, not really the best way to do it, but and you can see the wire from the capacitor goes to there. So when you do the modification you unclip all the resistors that go to this there. And just uh, and you un un disconnect this power lead going to there as well. And there's a, just a normal lead going up to there. And you put this capacitor in place of it. So uh, grab the capacitor with your hand. I've snipped the other wire off. And uh, try not to melt that little bit near it. There you go, a bit manky looking anyway, wasn't it really? Oh, I've had bent the wire over now. Bit of a panic there, I didn't think it was going to fit in the case. Anyway, it's a 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. So now we've got to put this lead onto here. I've got it in and I've got it wrapped round to get a decent, uh, decent connection. Well, I'm telling you you're wrong. You want to have the negative side of the capacitor going into the box and the positive going to the bottom of the board. I've just tried it the other way around and it didn't work. So a bit of a heart attack moment then. So I'm just using a bit of cardboard to try and get a template for the heat sink I'm going to make. I might stick some of these on the top there or take these off and glue them on but Stuck on with that sticky tape, and I can't get them off. Quite strong, that is. But I heard it's not as good as paste, this sticky tape. So I'm just leaving enough room at the top and the bottom so I can prise the chip off. Now, I don't want to join it up to this side because this gets incredibly hot. This gets warm, but not as hot as this side. I didn't even leave a room with this without a heatsink on. God knows how they survived in the old days, but. That should be about right, so I'll cut that out. I'll mark that onto there and cut it out of my snippers. So before I fit the ULA um, heatsink, I'm going to try testing the temperature of the chip and see if it makes a difference. I'm going to test it like that because that's how I have the, I've used these on my central heating tank. These sensors, I've just got that touching the tank. 
and put a bit of heat sink compound here and I'll show you the readings. And it's computer's been on for 30 seconds and I'll just put in the sensor on now. Well it's been a few minutes and it's sort of stopped increasing 36.4 well, it is still going up, but it's not going up very quick. I might just leave it another minute, see what happens. Well, I put the sensor on this on its side, so it's laid flat against the chip, and it's going up quite a bit. But I've been here about five minutes. I want to go to the toilet. We should settle down. Okay, that's it. Forty-four point two. It's sort of hanging about there. It's obviously a bit hotter than that. But I'm not touching the chip properly with the sensor because when you touch it with your hand it's red hot you can't leave your hand on there yeah so um, I'm going to uh, glue this heat sink onto there, there with this thermal glue not used it before so I'm going to put it on there and then put a weight on top and hopefully it should hold it in place but not too hard and it sticks forever so otherwise we're lost to the ULO chip ULA chip so I've got some on my tweezers already it looks like it's quite liquidy like a heat sink compound do you think that's enough? looks like enough doesn't it? I think that'll do ok then here we go Should we Press it on and then pull it off and check, see if it's spread across the area. I think that might be a good idea. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's go for it. So uh, we'll put a weight on it now. Ooh. Is it moving? Is it that heavy? Yeah, okay, we're lined up. So it's the next day and the glue's dried. We've just had the computer on for half an hour with it resting on similar to the like the other and it's at 33.6 degrees so it's 10 degrees cooler but it's still quite warm but it's got to help hasn't it? This chips it's warm but I don't think it's going to be a problem I think we'll leave that now I think we'll leave it now I'm getting obsessed with heat sinks Right, so we've got to do the keyboard next, and this come off. Not too bad. I bent it a little bit down the bottom, so I could put it in the vise in the garage and strain it up. I've never done one of these before, so I don't know what I'm doing. I presume this comes off, and this pops out. Ah, oh, back in a minute then. Here's your zap. Well, it all cleaned up with IPA down the side and the front. It says to use 6mm double sided tape on the back and 12mm down the front and the sides, but it. Uh, I can't see no mark of any glue. Anyway, this goes in here. You can only get it one way. So uh, I put the keyboard overlay in. Everything seems to be working alright. I've managed to straighten up the uh, the top bit. I've got to clean off the um, the sticky stuff. And if you use IPA isotropical alcohol, you've got to be careful not to get it onto the other side because it can get rid of the paint. So that's a, another job. I've ordered some double-sided sticky tape to go around 12 mil. To go around there, you need six mil on the top. So we'll see what happens there. So the double-sided tapes arrived, £1.90 off eBay, 
and they arrive with special delivery as well, which is quite good. Um, it's 12 mil tape, and uh, I've stuck this bit down. Obviously, this one I've cut in half. So it's six mil at the back. Missed a bit out there. Look, so we've got to do that, and then uh, I'll stick the keyboard on in the morning when I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Right, it's come to that time to peel off the cellar tape. Quite a nice feeling, really. No, is that all coming off in one go? Anyway, I'll see you in a minute. Oh, that went all right. Hmm, very nice. I've noticed that the speaker is just a bit wobbly and that casing is just a bit wobbly. I'm going to apply a bit of lacquer onto there and onto the screw on the other side. Sorry, screw. Onto the um, cable I joined across just to hold it in place. We'll do a quick voltage check before I put it back together. 5 volts on here, 4.9, uh, 12.07, and this side should be minus 5, minus 4.63. Well, it's not perfect, is it? But must be right. Well, it works, but I did have to. Um, Take off the back cover on the top cover on the um, RF modulator because it was uh, bending the, the cable t t too much, the ribbon cable, and that's the second time I've had that. Out of three keyboards I've done on Spectrums, not on this type, on the other Spectrum Plus, and this one, I've had two cases of this being making the cable bend too much. So, if you have a problem with the keyboard at work when you pushed the case down, Take that off. So I'll just uh, do a sample load, see if it works. And uh, thanks for watching.